Hey, thanks, John. Let me share my screen here. Okay, so I'm going to talk today about something that I've been doing uh, for Netflix uh, called Camcorder. And this is a system to uh, monitor and record uh, different um, CCBs at runtime. And, and I'll get into what that is here in a second. Um, so CAM is the common access method. It's a set of routines and procedures that uh, Justin Gibbs and Ken Mary and Scott Long and a bunch of other people have implemented over the years. Uh, it was originally defined by ANSI, uh, but we wound up being one of the only people to implement it. Um, it's the block storage layer that most of the people, uh, most of the <clears throat> storage that we have in FreeBSD uses. And it has a message passing model. Um, and there are two uh, partners in this message passing. the hardware and translates um, protocol requests like read this disk block or um, trim these disk blocks or whatever into um, something that the hardware can do. Um, it gets its messages uh, via CCB, which are called CAM control blocks. Um, it gets its messages <clears throat> from the proof drivers. And the proof drivers uh, are block storage devices that uh, interface to the FreeBSD block system and translate the block requests into some kind of protocol, either have it be um, uh, SD cards or uh, SATA or uh, SAS or NVMe. Um, it translates the block layer requests into those kinds of requests and hands them off to the SIM via filled in CCB. <clears throat> and the SIM, when it gets the CCB from the driver, um, will um, tell the hardware to do its thing. And when it's done, it fills in some stuff in the CCB and passes that back to the driver. Now, one of the things that FreeBSD has had for years is uh, TCP dump from like the very, very first versions of FreeBSD that would let you monitor network traffic. This is very helpful for diagnosing problems. And later, after the USB stack was rewritten uh, by Hans um, Peta, we had something called USB dump, and which was the um, which was written by someone else um, that does basically the same thing. And it hooked into the um, Berkeley, the BPF system, um, and treated uh, USB transactions as if they were network traffic. So you can dump those out and filter on them. But we haven't had any way to do that with CAM results un until now. Um, you could do some of this um, with Dtrace if you wanted to. Uh, collect logs for short periods of time. Uh, you could do that with Dtrace um, and hand them off to the vendors who's saying, what's, what's your workload look like? Um, but we weren't able to provide more details than um, to some of the simple uh, things. Um, one of the things we've had different vendors do at Netflix is they've come to our site and hooked up a, basically a, a logic or protocol analyzer um, usually these are made by LaCroix or some other manufacturer and they take traces with them and a lot of their tooling are based around these traces and it would be nice if we could provide those as well. <clears throat> so um, why camcorder? Why not just keep using Dtrace? Well, there were a lot of reasons that motivated me for doing this. Um, Dtrace can't be always on on all the machines in our, in our entire network, for example. Um, and you can't use Dtrace early in boot. Um, and once you get beyond, I have this little simple request, <clears throat> if you want to delve more deeply into the details of, of the requests that are going on, Dtrace um, becomes uh, much harder to use much more quickly um, than I like. Um, also, uh, while Cam is... Uh, <clears throat> You know, while there's some documentation for CAM, it'd be nice to study what CAM's actually doing versus what the documentation uh, says that it's doing. Um, and so having a way to view it in real time, um, it would be helpful for that, particularly if you're trying to learn how um, devices 
um, or sims are created and the, the initial things that they do, uh, you can look at code and you can look at documentation, but that only goes so far. Um, the other thing that motivated me to write this was that we had a bunch of really, really weird crashes um, inside a cam in our uh, fleet of teens of thousands of servers. That's as specific as they let me be. Um, and we'd have, you know, five or 10 a month where I'd get a look at the core dump uh, and go, wow, that's weird. I know that it's doing some ATA request and it's, it, it made the mistake of thinking the peripheral was still there and our internal consistency checks caught it. Great, how did we get here? <clears throat> I, despite sifting through, you know, maybe a, a hundred of these different core files, I could never find how we got here. So that got me frustrated. Um, so I wanted to do something about that. I wanted to have uh, something that was always on that I could then extract the recent history uh, from uh, these core files and take a look at how did we get to where we were. Um, I also, it would, it's sometimes nice Wireshark or other visualization tools to look at the time series of events that are trims are happening in their um, relative um, frequency. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, that's also something that's useful. I wrote an IO scheduler and to be able to know whether or not um, that's uh, useful is a, a good thing. Um, and finally, I couldn't resist a good pun. Um, normally you would just call this, you know, cam PF for the cam packet filter or cam dump or something like that. But I wanted to call it camcorder. Um, you know, back in the 80s and 90s um, and 2000s, I used a camcorder like this to record um, my son's hockey games. And I thought, wow, that's a cool name. I, I, I never thought I'd be able to use a name like that. So I can't resist a good pun. Now, there may be better reasons for doing a project, but, you know, sometimes out of spite is, you know, a good reason. Um, so some, some features of, of camcorder. Um, first of all, the code is 100% optional. Um, if you don't have the camcorder kernel in the option or camcorder option in the kernel, uh, nothing happens. You don't get any, um, <clears throat> no codes changes, nothing. So this has to be enabled. Um, we can optionally retain the last in CCBs on an ongoing basis. So for my uh, crash dump scenario, I'm able to use this to capture dumps. I've not yet deployed this on a system that has crashed though. So we're um, other than on purpose. Um, so I can extract the CCBs. Um, so I know they're there, but I, I've not been able to yet to use this to debug my particular problem. Um, the other thing we can do with it is dump as view in real time. I've written a cam dump program that's similar to UCB dump or uh, sorry, USB dump that uh, dumps the different CCBs. Right now, the printing is really primitive. It just prints the type and a, a couple of interesting fields for each type or for a couple of the types, it needs a lot of work. Um, and we can also create PCAP files with CCBs. Um, and we can um, either use those in, you know, create those in real time, or we can take one that we've captured and look at it um, after the fact. So uh, to understand where I inserted stuff, um, let me show you the CAM simplified diagram. This attempts to show the CCB passing that I talked about um, earlier. And um, it's kind of a, a busy uh, diagram, but the, the key part here is that, um, sorry. Mm, I don't know what happened there. The key part here is that the perif um, sends the action to the SIM. And then when the SIM is done, it calls XPT done. And I was able to use that um, to uh, hook into CCB. Um, I added uh, a tap in XPT action um, and XPT done and a couple related routines so that all of the traffic um, can be uh, there. So this adds a little bit of a shim in between the, you know, the uh, proof device 
uh, and the XPT devices and the SIM that basically records the packet. So it's relatively straightforward to understand. Um, and I'm noticing questions are popping up. I'm going to handle the questions at the end um, and go back to whatever slide is relevant if necessary. Um, <clears throat> and here's the interaction with IFNET. Um, this is kind of a new thing for CAMP, um, where um, when we create a SIM and Camcorder is active, <clears throat> we create a CAM PF uh, for that SIM. And that's basically a clonable if, uh, IFNET instance. Um, and we have a number of routines. Um, we just create one called CAM0, but the matching device will look at all of the SIMs in the system to match. So you can uh, do the dumps on interface NVMe 0 or NPR1 or whatever you want to do. Um, <clears throat> and um, this is a fairly detailed diagram I included in mostly so when people go back and look at my slides, people can look at it. Um, I'm not going to belabor it here other than to say this uses the, the, the standard mechanisms for when we do a dump, we create a new interface and create a packet filter and download a little program um, a Berkeley packet filter program that is used to filter the packets out and pass them back to user land. Same as you would use in any other network device, except this is a storage device. <clears throat> and this um, clonable interface um, lasts as long as the, as the SIM does. So um, when we're getting packets, um, in the PF, uh, we do two things with them. Or list. And the circular list, um, we um, recycle the first one to become the last one. Um, also, if while we're growing the list, we can't allocate. Uh, something we pull from the first one to the last one so we can record as many packets as possible um, so that we don't have to wait for anything. One of the things that we really don't want to do is add additional latency or sleeps to CAM that are already um, there um, or then are already there. Um, the next thing we do when we get a CCB is we um, pass it off to the Berkeley Packet Filter tap. And that runs the packet through the little programs that have been downloaded and returns. Now, if we haven't, if nobody's doing a cam dump, um, we don't do this at all. Um, I've not optimized the call out entirely if neither of these are enabled, um, but potentially we could do that as well in the future. Um, the other companion uh, to a camcorder is a cam dump. Cam dump. Uh, can be used to get data in real time or display um, data you collected previous, um, previously. Um, one of the things that I'm adding as we speak is the ability to filter by endpoints. So um, for single device uh, SIMs like an NVMe drive with one namespace, um, having uh, filtering isn't all that useful, uh, at least by endpoint. But for a uh, RAID controller uh, from Okay, I think I'm back. Um, let me grab the screen and I will continue my presentation. It seems to have taken out my screen when I closed it. One second. Oh, come on. Okay, 
sorry about that. Um, I'm not sure where I dropped, so I'll, I'm just going to start over on this slide. And uh, you can ask a question if uh, the last, previous part of the last slide was cut off. Um, so Chem, ChemDump is a program that I wrote that goes along with Camcorder. And it allows you to get the data um, out of Cam in real time or display old dumps that you've um, collected. Um, right, I'm currently adding filtering by endpoint. And what this means is if you've got a RAID controller, like an NPR or MPS controller that has multiple um, devices attached, you can just trace one. For things like NVMe, where there's only one device typically, um, it's not a big deal. But for that, it can be you know, quite helpful if you're wanting to look at just one specific de um, device. Um, it writes the records out into a PCAP file um, or, and, or displays them on screen, just you know, like you'd expect from TCP dump. Um, in the future, I plan on adding um, some additional ways to filter by um, CCB type or maybe look inside the CCBs. That's going to be a little bit complicated. Um, and I've not, you know, that'll be in the second round of, of enhancements. Um, also, um, there are a number of ways you can add custom PCAPs to Wireshark, and I hope to do that. Um, the other thing that it does is it creates a circular buffer. Um, it's exactly what you would expect um, a circular buffer to be. Um, and the main reason I did this was, again, to piece together what happened when uh, we get a panic. And I want to look at the storage transactions um, that have been completed and freed up, but um, uh, influenced why we panicked. Uh, I talked about some of the other things um, on this slide already. Uh, <clears throat> So um, in addition, in this project, there were a number of uh, minor improvements to CAM um, that uh, I did. The biggest one is I enhanced the SIM to do SMR allocation. And what that lets us do is when we're look, when CAM dump runs, it needs to look up a, a SIM by name. And there was no way to do that prior to this. And in order to um, get the lifetimes right without doing um, uh, more the heavyweight ref counting that um, CAM does uh, normally. And also to, um, to learn how to use SMR in a fairly simple and constrained um, arrangement, I added that. Um, and I did some cleanup uh, to CAM. And I started using a new tool that Linux has been using for years called Coconut. I don't ever know how to pronounce this. I've heard it pronounced Coxisnel or Coconel. Um, and basically, it's a semantic grep that lets you look for um, different constructs in the code. And I found a couple of dodgy things in CAM that I've um, either fixed or have fixes uh, in the pipeline for. Um, so currently, the status, you know, what, what's working, what's not working. Uh, currently, I'm able to collect the CCBs. Um, and if I do a force a core dump, I can find them with um, a stupid little program that I've written. Um, <clears throat> and um, with the same stupid program I've written, I can look at the running kernel and dump um, CCBs out. Um, but it's pretty primitive. I need to work on these uh, particular uh, filters. Um, <clears throat> and I'll look at the IRC mentions here in a minute when I'm done with the presentation. Um, so uh, right now only the CCB metadata is transferred, yeah, not the data itself. So I can't find the files that are being read or written to disk or anything. I just know the raw block numbers. Um, and as with anything in the early stages, the formatting is terrible. Um, the dumps are, you know, it needs, it needs a lot of work. Um, and finally, I need to register and define a proper PCAP type. Um, and so I can provide a PCAP format. Evidently, um, I can't um, register um, the type. So that's going to be the first thing that I do. Um, I'm also going to add display code um, to Wireshark. I, I might not do this. I've had one volunteer who might do it. And if there are other volunteers that want to help, that would be great. Um, I need to improve the filtering, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so that uh, we can narrow the things down. The last thing you want to do is have a one is to crank this up on a one drive system and do all the filtering um, or do no filtering 
and get all the transactions, which will generate additional transactions. It's kind of like do it running TCP dump um, on uh, for all the packets on an interface you're coming into a system over. Um, that doesn't work out too well. It would also be nice to uh, post-process the PCAP files um, to look at just the SCSI CDBs or to produce um, something in industry standard LaCroix or similar uh, format. Um, um, the different proofs that we have in CAM and maybe into some of the CAM drivers. So this is time for questions. Um, so I'm going to uh, stop screen sharing and see if I can find the questions that have been asked so far. Um, so one of the first questions was, does camcorder include um, the protocol decoding? Um, and currently that was what I was talking about. It produces a human readable form if you're me right now. Um, maybe some of the other cam folks would understand it. Um, and that will be um, improved before I uh, commit this. Um, the, the CCBs in the buffering, um, so uh, the next question is, are the CCBs in the buffering? Um, and yes, they are. The, in fact, they're not only timestamped, but a number of other bits of metadata are recorded in that. And that's one of the things that needs to be um, improved. The CCB has a pointer to a path, and that has pointers to a number of different things. And if you don't record some of the information from that, if that path goes away, you have no way to recover it later. So not only is the time recorded, um, but some additional meta information um, that is pointed to by the CCB, um, but not just the CCB itself, um, is also recorded. Um, so off topic, have I performance tested um, NDA versus uh, NVD? The only performance testing that I've done um, or that I'm aware of is stuff that we did at Netflix for bulk transfers, and they're the same. The performance is the same. I know that Alexander Kaviyev, um has, uh, um, sorry, Alexander Moten, I'm getting my Alexanders confused. Alexander Moten has done a lot of um, improvements to uh, NVMe with the NVD drive for um, clients that need, uh, or customers that need, of his that need a high transaction rate. Um, and they're still using NVD. Um, I've not looked at benchmarks for that directly. Um, so I don't know uh, how big a difference uh, that is. So even though that's a little bit off topic, um, that's um, there. Um, were there other interesting things in IRC? Or if I go to IRC and see all my mentions, I will have been calcate. Oh, you okay. Oh, we didn't we calcate you. Um, we, we, we did stop dinging you at some point. Well, yeah, that's um, true. Imp, are you there? Are we doing the presentation? Hello? OK. I oh, was... no, we, we figured out that actually every time we mentioned you on IRC, you dinged. <laughs> of course. It, it, it's it's twice we've done this to you. Um, I yeah. didn't have a. And, and also, um, if I didn't blow up a laptop, I had other problems. This time, dinging and internet connection. So that's two. <laughs> Uh, that's the way it goes. I had a question for you, though. I've talked about it some on IRC. Um, I know one thing that I recall with the USB dump approach is having these fake if nets around that weren't if nets introduced some unfortunate side effects. I think we have some hacks in places, for example, to hide them from if config or to make sure that we don't like auto start DH client when they come up and things like that. Uh, and I know it's probably outside the scope of what you're doing, but it might be nice at some point to have an abstraction for BPF that isn't an ifnet, where like we can attach BPF in a way to name things that BPF attaches to that aren't necessarily an ifnet. But that's probably a bit more than like that's a version two thing as opposed to that's what probably a version running. three thing for me. <laughs> yeah, <probably laughs> version two is a refinement of this, but yeah, um, the way that uh, USB dump and CAM dump deal with that is um, we return an error for every single IOCTA. So um, when uh, if config tries to list the devices, um, they don't show up. So if that's the hack you're talking about, I didn't have to hack if config to keep, um, you know. I think we may have made it better then because at one point they did actually show up, but I think we even had 
you can list them. And in fact, when I first started this, it's like, why aren't these listed? I, I remember the USB device and my USB devices aren't listed. And it turns out, I believe that that's because there's a um, IOCTL that just says return error. There's no configuration, nothing allowed for these. Okay. Um, I agree with you that it would be nice um, to have kind of um, uh, a, um, uh, an abstraction that we could use um, to do that it, because uh, one of the things the Linux world has done is they have something similar where you can um, have more events and more interesting things and it uses an extended version of uh, BPF that um, Clang, I believe, LLV has an LLVM backend for it and they, they download stuff like that as well and that could potentially be um, interesting. A lot of the folks that were doing D-Trace have moved on to that. Um, if you know, we could produce format opportunity for us to leverage some of that work rather than um, reinvent it all. Okay, I think you have one more question, and then we'll probably after this go to the break because I haven't seen you in there. See, but I'll let you do this last question. Okay. <clears throat> Um, uh, okay, so in the US, um, well, I think you need to read the question so that we have. Okay, I'm going to read the question. Um, what are the applications? How uh, would we be taking advantage of this feature? Is it for like camera systems? Well, no, no. Um, in the US, we had uh, video recorders and, you know, video cassette recorders and over the top, over and, you know, just a video camera. Um, and the only connection with, with video cameras is the name that was slang in the US in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s for these things. They were called camcorders. Um, I suppose you could use it to trace what's going on in a camera system, but um, it, it, it's, its main purpose is just kind of a pun of cam, which is the common access method, which is uh, how we do things um, you know, with that. Um, the uh, <clears throat> applications for it are more um, if you are seeing a disk hang and you want to know what I.O. is going on, or if you are trying to debug whether or not um, trims are enabled, you can see um, and actually getting um, uh, uh, through to that. Um, and, and so that's uh, some of the applications. Um, there's a question on IRC that just popped up. Um, is it possible to just capture failures? Um, right now, no. Right now it captures everything. <clears throat> and um, to just capture failures, we'd have to capture, it might be possible. Um, but um, I hadn't thought about that until uh, you asked the question. So that's, that's something I'd have to think about. It could potentially be um, interesting, but right now we report failures um, out via DevD. We report at a, not at the CCB level, but either at the SCSI, NVMe, or ATA level. We'll report the protocol block that was sent out and the status. So do I have any more time, John, or is it time for a break? It looks like it's time for a break. It's time for a break. Um, yep. Um, I'm going to answer side, I'm gonna answer side question real quick. No. Yeah, go for it. Um, side question was, could this have been done using Trace Pro? And the answer is no. I don't have time to go into why, but I, earlier in the talk, uh, basically, um, you can't use it during early boot and you can't um, uh, have it be always on are the two reasons why I didn't do it with deep face probes. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Warner. Um, Great. I think we're going to go to our next break. So. Folks are welcome to go hang out um, in the hallway track or whatever you run to the restroom, whatever you need to do during the break. And we'll be back and yeah, we'll still do 10 minutes. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes for a working group session on IP version six led by Hiroki Satosan. <laughs>